Hi everyone, hope you're doing okay. It's Mark here with Monday Morning's Thought for the Day. Apologies, this one's uh, being uploaded a little bit late. The uh, the person who uh, was due to, to do today's Thought for the Day hasn't been well over the weekend and uh, so we're playing catch up a little bit. So apologies, you have me again. Uh, yesterday, um, on Sunday uh, in the evening, we ran the first session for our emotionally healthy spirituality course um, second time we've run it here at the church and uh, really exciting uh, that there is just over 20 people signed up for that again and uh, i think it's a wonderful course uh, looking at the relationship between our emotional health and our spiritual health and seeing that those two things are deeply and intimately connected one of the things that we ask people to do on the course and that we give them is uh, we give them this day by day um, daily office and as they do the course we ask them to do the daily office twice a day to get into a good rhythm and practice of spending time with God particularly spending time with God in silence and uh, learning that that can become part of their spiritual disciplines and rhythm as they seek to live their lives with God. And uh, so I thought, just because it's fresh in my mind, I thought that I would take us through um, the first day, the first morning um, of this day by day daily office today. And uh, the reading that they give us is from Mark 11, 15 to 17, and I'll read it to us now. It says this, on reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. It's an interesting scene in Jesus's life, isn't it? And there's a short devotional comment on this, which I'll read to us. It says this, Jesus intense anger and overturning of the tables in the temple courts ought to make us gasp. He knows that if we don't get to God, invaluable treasures will be lost or obscured. We lose the space where we experience God's unfailing love and amazing forgiveness. We lose an eternal perspective on what is important and what is not. We lose compassion. We gain the world, but we lose our souls. And there's a short poem. And the poem's entitled, Be Free for God. I have a need of such clearance as the Saviour effected in the temple of Jerusalem, a riddance of clutter, of what is secondary that blocks the way to the all-important central emptiness which is filled with the presence of God alone. And here's a question for us this morning. How would you describe what is secondary in your life? The thing that might be blocking the way to experiencing God. Take a moment to think that through, maybe pause this video if you need to. But we're just going to have two minutes of quiet, of silence, just to spend some time with God in response to what we've thought about, what we've heard. And uh, I'd encourage you to sit comfortably, to maybe use a, an anchor word or phrase that helps you just to keep focused on God. I, I tend to use the word Emmanuel. Um, you might want to use that or just the word Jesus, his name, or maybe Yahweh or something like that that just helps you just to focus on God. And in this two minutes, just take some deep breaths and hold them and breathe out. And as you breathe in and as you breathe out, so maybe just repeat that word or phrase and just recognise that you're in God's presence. Let's take that moment of silence now, shall we?
as we come out of that silence. Here's a prayer. Lord, help me to see how much I lose when I lose you. My perspective on my life and all of my life gets distorted when I don't make space for you, obscuring your love for me. Your love is better than life. And truly, I long for more tastes of that love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day.